Join us for a review of the BMW X125e, the plug-in hybrid. Let's go! Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and thank you so much for all long-term subscribers. Here the BMW X1, since the most recent facelift has this stronger front double kidney, more aligned with the bigger SUV brothers and X1 and X2 are the only BMW SUVs that are built in Germany in Regensburg, whereas the bigger SUVs beginning from the X3 are all built in Spartanburg in the US. Headlamps still come with halogen as base, why? They want your money <laughs> for the op uh, optional updates. Here the LED or the optional adaptive LED then. More sophisticated function and then they also have a different daytime running light. This is really beautifully done here right there. Filming in the rain is not pleasant but looking at cars with raindrops on the paint, hmm, that's really beautiful. Length 4 meters 44, 175 inches or 14 foot 5. And now, ladies and gentlemen, get your drinks ready because the drinking game here is from which side will I enter the stage? Today from this one. <laughs> Have you guessed it? So, here the X1 has this more upright shape but is somewhat between crossover and big SUVs. The X3, the bigger brother, is longer and also more upright, has the longer front hood. This one here just with the transverse engine mount, that means a shorter hood and no six-cylinder engines then in this case. Here the Model M Sport has the black frames and also the stronger side skirt here and also wheel arches painted in vehicle color there are also other for example the base x1 would have plastic wheel arches then there's also the x line which has more of this contrasting off-road scheme so depending on what you like wheels from 17 to 19 inch wheels these are indeed the optional the biggest ones the 19 inch wheels the x1 here in the rear also rather conservative design but I think it definitely still works. 25E here, the logo for the plug-in hybrid. The M Sport model here spices it a little bit up here with the gray insert. Very interesting design choice. And the outer fuel fake exhaust police could stay at home today. So they're taking a coffee break because this is a real exhaust from that combustion engine. The BMW X1 plug-in hybrid. Yes, we're having a lot of fun here today, Jonas and I, as always. So the plug-in hybrid 25E has the combustion engine here in the front, 125 horsepower, plus electric motor in the rear, 95 horsepower. Combined power then, 220 horsepower, 6.9 seconds is the acceleration figure, 0 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And the range, about 50 kilometers pure electric, about 30 miles pure electric for this one. Power-wise, yeah, half a second slower approximately than the 25i, 28 I call in US or the 25 D so it is also one of the top spec engines then charging port is here on the driver side 3.7 kilowatt maximum AC charging yeah that's not too fast but usually if you leave it overnight it's okay and then you can get this 10 kilowatt hour battery full 10 kilowatt hour gross and 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour net
So that's got on the inside and this car here sits between crossovers and SUV I would say. It's not like a super large SUV but already feels decent as for the upright seating position. I have had more comfortable cars and when I compare the seating position with the competitors I wouldn't say it's the worst but I wouldn't say it's the best. Headroom with 1 with 86 or 6 with 1. Yeah, that's that still works, definitely no problem. It will be different maybe with the rear bench because of plug-in hybrid. Mm, let's find out more about that very soon. Here there's also the electric seating setup. Front, the back part, also then here the side bolsters and the top part you can control and also with the two memory seatings. Interior overview, this is rather a classic setup. It's not all, you know, one of the newest vehicles, so we still have a lot of buttons left, but it's great to have still a manual climate unit, for example, so some old schooling is definitely good. Here again the matte wood insert, really nicely done. This screen is like popped up, but it somehow mirrors in design the lower part, so I think you can do that. And then the bright style here also with soft touch is also nice. Top dashboard is also soft touch. The screen setup is a little bit complicated. On the left side, these are analog gauges, but it's like a black panel technology so you see it's all blacked out right now and when I turn on the ignition then it comes to life but it's just the backlighting that does that. The screen here is either 2.7 inch that would be just the small one here or then this one here is the bigger one 5.7 so almost 6 inches and it goes like this so the right part as well but still no full digital gauges here on the left side. On the right side you start with a 6.5 inch screen, optional 8.8 .8 inch, and then this is the optional, optional 10.25 inch screen. And when you have a bigger one on the right, you also have the bigger one on the left. So this software version is not as current, so to speak, as the OS 7, but still it's easy enough. So you have this app view right here. You also can use it in a touch way. As for the fuel economy for this plug-in hybrid, by the way, this is our Know, after we have reset it. It's quite interesting. 4.5 liters and one kilometers or 4.8 kilowatt hours and one kilometers. This is actually very decent and you can see it's like playing together. Both values are quite low but they're low because both energy and fuel is being used at the same time. Once again the instruments here with the black panel technology. So you see it almost looks digital but it isn't just here the lower part that is the digital one and there for example you can um, see then more of the um, consumption here like you know for both for the electric and also for the combustion engine so that's what you can change everything else rather remains the same but I think it does job is very clear to read as well now to the rear compartment and here comes the only practical catch of the X1 plug-in hybrid you can see here, nice also at the inside of the door, soft touch here, top part, then again the matte wood, very beautifully done, high build quality. And there it is, the rear bench, maybe you don't see it, but I can tell you it's about three centimeters or a little bit more than an inch higher than in the normal version because they need to store the battery underneath there. So that means you do lose some headroom, but how much can I still sit there as a tall adult? Let's check it out. In comparison to the X3, by the way, legroom wise, the X1 doesn't lose too much. You can see also this recess here at the back part of the seat, so you can still sit here as a tall adult, even though when a tall adult is driving. And well, I feel that the bench is a little bit higher than a normal version, but still without the panoramic roof, it's no problem, still enough headroom. It might be a problem when you have tall adults in the rear and the optional panoramic roof. That might be something. But I think we can live with that. And also the option of the movable bench that would usually be um, you know, one of the nice options. This is also not possible then here in the plug-in hybrid. But I think we could also live with that. So this then the fixed bench like it is right there. So normal BMW X1 trunk is about 500 liters to 1,500 liters. What do you lose here with the plug-in hybrid? Well, almost nothing. First of all, electric hatch here opens quite nicely. We have a backpack in here. You can see the sample works in here very well. Square dimensions, so they can very well use it. I already folded one of the seats here. And the only thing you do lose on the top part, hardly anything, just below here. Then it's a little bit more shallow, so that's still okay. Then you can store your charging cables here, for example.
Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the BMW X1 plug-in hybrid. And we're going through the different driving modes. Tell, tell all about the electric driving and of course also about this, you know, playing together with the combustion engine. It's very interesting with the e-driving modes and the normal driving modes that are available. First of all, something general about the X1. It feels quite good from the overview, so this windscreen is a little bit panoramic alike and you don't feel too high, so it's not this high sophisticated seating position as in the X3. However, also if you compare this to the previous generation X1, it feels more elaborated. It's somewhat in between, between crossover and SUV, I would say. Crisp steering feeling, very direct, very good, and also noise insulation wise here at 70 kilometers an hour it's really good very silent experience and at the moment we're driving all electric so there's no engine noise it was also very silent and relaxing when we just were starting i can also check the rpms here in this black panel design instrument if it's going on and then there are three different ev driving modes available there is the auto e-drive so this is a car decides on its own and then there are two e-drive modes available one for that you only have the ev driving and the other one for he says safe so then you save the battery for later when you might need it in the future no emission zone or so so three different modes available again usually you would leave it in the auto e-drive mode because for plug-in hybrid this is usually the best solution um, because for most plug-in hybrid it doesn't make sense that you just deplete the electric drive and that's it um, but it depends on if you have a short commute then this might make sense so Meanwhile, for example, here on the motorway, the combustion engine is on. You hardly realize that. There has a smooth transition for that here at 2,000 RPM. And when I get off the throttle, then some regeneration is happening. And here, the RPMs drop to zero. I'm in the electric mode again. And when I just slightly press the throttle, sometimes it can stay in the electric mode. But sometimes, in this case, hops on because the car decides what is actually the best to do at this very moment. And the acceleration figure here for the plug-in hybrid is 6.9 seconds to 1 km or 62 miles an hour. And that means it's a little bit slower than the 25i or 25d, but definitely comparable. Also one of the top models, so you're not lacking power. And then some driving off the motorway where we also can test the normal driving modes and there you normally have you know, the normal Eco Pro which reduces the throttle input, more efficiency and also goes more into the electric mode and then there's a Comfort which is a setting in between and then there's Sport and this directly turns on the combustion engine because in the Sport mode the car says like I want the maximum power, power of both drivetrains and so you can also then vary that. So the throttle limit will also be increased. Steering here, let's see if that changes. Yeah. In sports mode, you have a little bit more resistance, so it's a little stiffer also from the steering. And in comfort, there's like a, you know, a normal balance setting. And once again, I think I'm really happy with the suspension here. The general driving setup they found here with this vehicle is it's really very good, so you have a neutral setting. It feels light and easy to control. This additional 150 kilograms of weight they have here with the plug-in hybrid, do you feel it? Not really, um, so that's actually totally fine. Here now at the moment, for example, the car once again just drives with electric. Yeah, yeah, you really feel it, you know, that it's coming from the rear, so it pushes you a little bit more out of the corner so I really prefer to drive this one here all electric at some point there will also be an electric X1 but the iX3 the electric X3 this one will come first here for the X1 and need to be an all new platform first that this is actually enabled and here is also a nice countryside route where we can once again drive all electric and 
considering also other plug-in hybrid vehicles this car is favoring favoring the electric mode quite a lot and i think that's you know also um, not too bad let's check it in the auto e-drive it says that way yeah so you can easily also accelerate quite notably with the electric motor without the combustion engine hopping on it's just really when you do this pinning down then you actually have the combustion engine hopping on i can also try it here once again when i'm reaching the threshold see a little bit more resistant there so not all the way through this was like on halfway or so um, then the combustion engine also hopped on again so i think the driving is really superb with this vehicle uh, when we have the silent electric moments to me even better so here especially now in city um, just a small village here you know it's just silent from the inside silent from the outside that's really totally cool if you compare by the way to the bigger x3 if you're thinking about these vehicles to me the x3 just gives you more comfort also for tall people you know from a seat form driving position that's always cooler with the x3 however x1 is actually better to park in and out and driving fun wise you know here the x1 is so agile feels very very good here especially when slaloming so that's very nice and just from the energy consumption at the moment 5.5 liters more kilometers and 4.2 kilowatt hours on one kilometers so that's this mixed calculation and um, which would both be actually very very decent And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW X1 PHEV. From the exterior, of course, you don't see any difference. This is the M Sport model with a definitely distinct sporty look since the face is also a stronger front grille, definitely. And on the interior, we see a quite nice build quality, not, of course, as sophisticated as with BMW X3, which is also more expensive. However, here with the M Sport model, with the plug-in hybrid, this is here more expensive than 60,000 euros or dollars so really quite costly intensive for a compact SUV however the interior is quite well usable you know when you consider exterior interior length the only disadvantage of the plug-in hybrid model is that you don't have so much headroom in the rear bench other than that still very well usable as for the drivetrain fun to drive I think the setup here is very well optimized yet you have a good playing together with the combustion engine and the electric motor that you can really use the advantages with plug-in hybrids it's always the question is this the worst or the best of two worlds here i think the setup is quite nicely optimized so we also had you know that now at the end of the day some about 4.5 liters to one kilometers fuel consumption and 4.5 kilowatt hours to one kilometers, kilometers energy consumption this is of course quite interesting so it really helps each other then it's also a quite good use case or when you have an electric commuting where you just drive electric and you can also put that in the driving modes and then recharge again yeah definitely very interesting drivetrain especially when you get some governmental subsidies for example or some tax benefits and it is the most fun to drive i think from the x1 because you also have a rear wheel drive only if you like when you're just in the electric drive only mode and yeah for, especially for bmw <laughs> that can't hurt so very interesting impressions here from us today please give, give us your comments there in the section about this x1 in general and also if you think a plug-in hybrid would make sense for an x1 if that would be something for you also tune in to the other interesting reviews we always link in the video description and in the pinned comment see you there and see you next time